Well, to take a look at those headlines out of the G20 and how they're going down on the markets, we have the managing director of Fathom Financial Consulting here with us, Danny Gabe, and he's here. Thank you so much, Danny, for joining us. Now, it does seem that actually they didn't achieve much, but at least they achieved unity, which was actually not taken for granted when we started the G20 meeting. They've, they've agreed a statement. I'm not sure they've achieved unity. I mean, they've papered over some cracks and they appear to have tried to unite two fairly incompatible positions between supporting growth and reducing the deficits. So keeping the stimulus in place, but also setting out a plan to reduce it with some hard, reasonably hard deadlines. And um, you know, remains to be seen which of those two will win out. So d does this mean that actually you don't believe in it, that we're not going to cut the deficits by enough, or that we also risk a double-dip recession? The markets are clearly worrying about a double dip recession, we're, uh, and we agree with that concern. Um, there's a lot of focus on the momentum that's being lost at the moment, in, not just in the US, but Europe didn't really get going. So the engines for growth are spluttering. In that environment, it's very difficult to take very credibly commitments to support growth and cut the deficit. It's going to be quite a difficult So what would you do? Do we need a second stimulus package to make sure that actually growth is on the road to recovery? Well, what we're really concerned about is, right from the start, this whole crisis has been about the banking system. It remains about the banking system. We don't think it's the sovereign crisis per se. We think it was a bailout of French and German banks rather than the Greek sovereign state. And that hasn't really been addressed. To the extent that the G20 agree on that as the underlying cause, they've delayed bank proposals. But we've got three different factors going on here. The need to rebalance growth, for the Chinese currency to um, appreciate, the need to reduce deficits and the need to support the stimulus. All of them are uh, important, but they don't seem to have agreed which one comes first. But Danny, if this is a banking crisis, so they also talk about this capital requirement, which supposedly is going to actually um, save us from the next financial crisis. What can we do now? Do we need to publish stress tests? Do we need to go further and actually give all the books open? No, I think we've got to actually deal with the crisis we're in before we worry about solving the next one. The crisis we're in is on the basis that the actual losses that should be on banks' balance sheets have not been realised. Mm -hmm. It's very similar to the situation in Japan. We just transferred them to the sovereign balance sheet, but they still haven't been realised. If the US housing market, which remains at the core of all of this, takes another leg down, we're going to see further pressures put on those balance sheets, and I think that's the really big concern. But so how do you address this? Open the balance sheet so that at least people realise what's in there? Or someone's going to have to write down these debts. They're going to have to wear these losses, and simply slicing and dicing and moving around balance sheet isn't really fooling anybody. Um, then what do you suggest investors do in all of this? I mean, treasuries don't seem that attractive anymore, but maybe they look still more attractive than equities. Right. Well, we, we just published a forecast on that basis, and the Canadian Prime Minister referred to the G20 position as having to walk a tightrope, which by coincidence is what we've called our forecast, and that's exactly where we think investors are. The best case is probably what's priced in, which is moderate growth, moderate inflation, uh, and slow norm policy normalization. But the two risks are very unpleasant. One is uh, we get a significant bout of inflation, which a lot of investors are worried about. Our view is that's a secondary concern. The primary concern is deflation. The primary concern is that bond yields are flattening. And what the markets are starting to look at is a Japanese type situation playing out across the G7. So safe haven assets seem the obvious place to be at the moment. What we're confused about is why the market sees German bonds as a safe haven when they're clearly at the center of the crisis. Yeah, interesting. Danny, thank you so much. Uh, Danny Gabay there.